It's almost been 48 hours since I did the staining. I'm checking the cabinet out to see how it came out because I didn't see it for almost two days. And I'm also here to clean up the mess. Hard to see the mess at nighttime, but in daytime, there's a lot of dust. So I'm gonna start working on that as well. But the cabinet came out so nice. I am very, very happy with it. I know some of you guys had asked, what about putting the top natural? I'm trying to keep this as original as it was. And I love the dark wood, I think in the, early 1900s this is what the style would have been and that's what we're trying to keep it with as best as we can i am very pleased with how it looks i've been in communication with the folks that i use for our local woodworking store making sure i have all the details down to putting the final coat of poly on it as well as the poly acrylic so i'm using two different products uh, if you haven't seen my first video i will put a link for that up here and you guys can go check out the first video of explaining the products that I'm using for this cabinet. But for today, I'm going to start by cleaning up. Always have to clean up as part of the snail space challenge. And then if all goes well, get the first coat of finish on here. The top will have three coats and the sides will probably have two or three depending on how, how it looks and how it comes out. Is helping and she's doing a pretty good job, I might say, too. Uh, what time is it, Art? Do you have a... It is, let's see, it is um, 2.54. So it took 20 minutes. So well, it's not very long. So do that, and then also the side right here. And kids are playing with their marble racetrack. I am filling in the holes along the crown molding and I made it up to there. So I have a good chunk of it done. I still have a lot to do here, all around here, inside the bathroom. So still a lot of holes to fill. That's going really slowly. I don't know, I think you're doing really well, Art. Yeah. I think yeah. it's probably just a perspective thing. It feels like it's going it, it does feel like it's going slowly. All right, I'm done. 45 minutes later, and that meant 20 minutes for the cabinet and 25 minutes for the door. They all have to dry for two hours. And again, these guys, they weren't fully sanded. So the fronts were fully sanded, but I didn't do the whole cabinet. So putting the finish on them was just the fronts and the very tops here. The doors were a little bit more tricky just because they had more um, grooves and such to them but I have them all lined out drying, and then I can recoat in two hours. And Art is sporting out the refrigerator. Oh, I have to get down, it gets finished up there. Okay, so he got all the way around here. The crown molding, I still the crown the molding, right. stuff below it. And he started over there. So that was good progress. So I'm gonna clean up my brushes, and I will be back later this evening to put on a second coat for everything. I can't apply this until Monday, this is the stuff that I'm using for the top of the piece, but if I can get all of the other finish done on the cabinet, then this will be the only thing left to do. But good progress, and I will be back later. It's eight o'clock, and I'm back at it again for my second coat. This one should be a little bit faster. I'm gonna time myself and see how long it takes me to do the second coat.
these are the things that slow you down. I totally forgot to bring a scouring pad because you need to use either a really, really fine grit sandpaper or I've always used just a scouring pad, the type you get at the dollar store, like three pack, the green ones. Um, and I need to scuff up the tops so there's good adhesion, but it also takes care of any of the bumps. And I forgot it. So I need to run back home, grab that, and then come back. So reset the clock. We're gonna try this again when I get back. Okay, I am back. So now I have to scour pad the whole piece before I can start staining. I don't know if I should start the clock now or not, but well, here we go. the second time and I expect the third time will be about the same but I'm gonna head back home and I think Art will be back to work some more on the ceiling there he got a good chunk of it done but I think he's gonna come back later and work on that it is Monday morning and the cabinet had all weekend to dry I have one last coat to put on the sides and the doors which I'm going to work on right now and then I get started at the top which I'm excited about because I haven't used this product before so I'm hoping it will go quickly and easily So when I'm doing this part with the scouring pad, you can use really super fine grit sandpaper too. I have always used the scouring pad. In fact, this is the back of an old sponge. You guys probably recognize that. What I'm feeling for this last time is to remove most of those bumps. Now I realize you can't feel through the camera, but if I were to run my hand through, there, this is a rough spot right here, but then this is super smooth. Now part of it's the grain of the wood, but with the finish on it, this should be pretty smooth. And so this is still rough and it's got some bumps on it. So that's where I'm gonna take the scouring pad and just try to sand it down a little bit so when I put on the next coat of finish it'll be even smoother so let's see how that did and you can see it just roughs up the surface oh much better see it's yeah you guys can't yeah I say you see but um you can't feel but it is much smoother so that's what I'm doing on this last coat is just feeling all the wood feeling for bumps and then smoothing any out like right here there's some so I'll just smooth that right out a little bit more with this and that should give me a really nice finish on this last coat let's see how that feels much better oops <laughs> first mark on the wall Good thing for repaint. Yep. Art's over here working on the molding and filling in more holes. I don't think I don't think I can get the camera to pick up on it, so it can't be too bad, Art. Right here, yeah, it's a little. It's a little little mark, big little mark no yeah. biggie. We have to touch up, paint everything when we're done, so. Well. Right, what's well, a little bit more? <laughs> and I know this this step is pretty time consuming, but don't skip it because if you really want a nice finish, take the time to finish it well and scratch out those little rough spots because you'll be so much happier with your end product and it's worth the taking the time to do this. Okay.
Moment of truth. We're going to try this. It says to put it on thicker coats. So I presume that's to get that nice smooth finish on the top. I'm gonna mix it up and give it a try, see if this works. Huh, looks just like the polycurlic. It's saying stuff, I just heard you my friend. <laughs> Okay, so the bottom of it has goopy stuff, so we're gonna stir this real good. All right, first coat is done. It seemed like it went on really easily. It's a lot like the polycurlic that I was using on the drawers. I'm gonna clean up my paintbrush. This says it dries in two hours in ideal temperature conditions, which is 70 degrees, 50% humidity. We have less humidity, temperature is a little cooler. So I'm planning on coming back this evening to put on the next coat. Again, I have to sand between them. But so far, so good. I think we're on schedule to get this done by the uh, end of tomorrow. How about you, Art? No, Are you going to be not. done by the time I'm done? No. Well, I don't. By the next coat? I've got two more coats to do. I well, bet you're going to be done. Well, we'll see. I'm going to try. It's looking really good, well, I though. I still have a lot more than just this. I'm doing the crown molding now, but then I have to do all the other um, the floorboards, the doorways, and all yeah. the other stuff. So there's still plenty to do. So. It's been four hours since I put this on. It feels nice and dry. Just rechecking the instructions here, and it says to sand between coats. And Art had, from his shop, 320 sandpaper. So I'm gonna use that. It feels pretty good, but I really want the top finish to be really, really nice and smooth because this is gonna get a lot of use and abuse. And I don't want people picking at bubbles and such if there's a bubble because of um, poor sanding. So I'm going to get sanding and then get this recoated. I don't expect it to take more than 20 minutes. It should be a pretty quick job. So I will check the time right now. It is 5.01 and I'm going to get started. Janelle told me you guys might like to see what I'm doing. You see how there's that big gap in between the textured ceiling and the crown molding? But what I did is I filled in those gaps with the caulk. Okay, this might be a little hard to do while holding a camera, but I will try. So what I do is fill it in and you gotta get in all the gaps, and where it's larger, I have to hold it there longer to let that fill in. And then when I do a little section, I just go through with my finger and smooth it out. Then I have to clean up all the excess that's there too. And then with the extra, I just put that into the nail holes. I try not to make it mess. Yeah, it's a little harder to do with a camera. But uh, anyway, you get the idea. And that's what I'm doing. 17 minutes. Good time. One more coat. We'll do that in the morning. What do you think? Well, it looks good so far. Yeah, hopefully it'll hold up. That's... I tried to put it on a little bit thicker, so it's really sealing that wood. Hopefully that third coat will do that even more. But boy, I love it. Absolutely love it. I love the color. I love, the, I love everything about it. Happy I did it. It is another snowy day in upstate New York. 
And I just walked in to check this out. It's been 24 hours since I was here last. It feels wonderful. Really happy with how it feels. It feels pretty sealed, not completely. So I'm going to sand it down lightly one last time, put the last coat on it, and then it will be done. I would say this was one snail's pace that actually moved at a cheetah speed. Well, there it is. It is done. Art was hoping that the top would be a little bit thicker. So we're gonna see how this dries and see if he feels that this is enough. I'm not sure I can do a fourth coat. I'll have to look up on that manufacturer, see if I can do a fourth. I know they recommend two to three coats. Not sure I can get away with a fourth one, but I am very pleased with how this turned out. The gloss that you see right now is just because it's wet. This is a semi-gloss, so this is gonna tone down a little bit. Um, and any of the lap marks will also tighten down. You can see the lap marks right there. Those will tighten down as it dries. But overall, very pleased with how it came out and I can't wait to get it installed. And yesterday, Art finished almost all of the whole filling for the crown molding in the bathroom as well as the main room. So we still have a little bit more to do in here, but definitely making really good progress. It's been several days and I just stopped by to see how the countertop feels after being dry. And I am really happy with it. It feels nice and dry and it feels nice and smooth too. So win-win here. Uh, today, Art and I are working on getting the plumbing into this wall. So I'm gonna start out by tracing this with cardboard because we're gonna have to lay this sink in, but the sink's gonna move around a bit before we secure it the final time, and I don't wanna scratch the top. So I'm gonna trace out the cardboard so we can lay the sink in and it'll lay on the cardboard, and then we can get an idea of where we need to put the holes in the back of the cabinet to connect the water and the drain. for the Celotex knife and then I'm going to cut it out. Nice. Well done. Now put the sink in there. Yeah. Nah, that'll be good, Art. Yep. Okay. Now I feel like you can adjust that without ruining the tuner. Right. Let's see, it's 33 inches. Cabinet should be around 35 to 36. So you need to put an extender on there. Yeah. I think, I think two inches. Two inches, okay. Because our kitchen is what, 35 and a half? Yeah, 35 and a half, one is 36. Right, and so you're adding an extra almost half an inch right here with the lip. So if you're washing dishes, you're kind of bending over, so you definitely need a little space. Well, if you want to do 36, I mean. No, I, just, I think 36 is a little too much. Okay, so we'll stick with 35. So we'll do 35. Okay. That works. In deference to the people who are um, a little shorter. Do we need to move this against the wall and then figure out how much height? Yes, and the yeah, the floor is not level at all, so we need a level and figure out where the floor is and... Oh, well, actually, we probably need to cut the hole on the wall first to find those pipes, because this will... We can't... Right. <laughs> this has to be in this permanent resting place, so we know... Yes, it does. For my leg extenders, what I did is I got a, a log from... Well, it actually came from a neighbor's tree that we cut down for him, and we saved the wood, so... Here is what I made. I put it on the lathe, turned it down, and we have that. I'm going to cut sections out and extend the legs. Here is one of the original legs, and I'm going to just make a little... Isn't that cool? There ...and then do that. So <laughs> that is cool. That's what we're going to do. So, do you have you have four there, right? There's at oh. least four pieces. Oh, yeah, you could get... I mean, uh, seven. How many legs we, need, do... we need seven. 
Okay. Though you have seven in here, because okay. it's only like two or two and two to two and a half inches, depending upon where it lines up on the uneven floor. Okay. And how did you how did you make those? I just put it in the lathe and turned it down, and then I sanded it. Cool. Yeah. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. And then to sand it, you just take a piece of sandpaper while it's spinning on the lathe and do it that way. It's a lot easier. And is that cedar, you think, or? Yeah, it's like something like that. Yeah cedar or you or one of those. Now once you get that done I'll sand it up and we'll get it on. They're really pretty though. Yeah we still have to stain them but uh, right. that's not too hard because they're little. This is terrible. The nice new wall that we worked so hard on. I'm going to uh, cut it. Here you go. <gasps> that's awful art. Yes. All that paint that I did. Oh well at least this can be hidden behind a cabinet. Right. So do they know what we're doing here? The plumbing. Yep. Yes. And we looked at old pictures before we put the drywall on here. And uh, we know approximately where we need to be for the, the tubing to come out of the wall. So I need to hook up to a uh, the sink for the, the uh, outflow and inflow of the water. So yeah. just cutting a small hole so I can see what we're working with. And then I'm going to cut it a little bigger so I can get in there and do what needs to be done. I think I hear Peter coming up the stairs. Looks Yay, a level! Thank you! Thank you. Why are this tall bunch? We're going to cut them down to size. Yeah, they're only going to be about two, two and a half inches long. Moment of truth. Okay. How do we do? I see some tubes. Um, Let's see, where's the out? Okay, the out is a lot further down, which is actually good because the out has to go down. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. Why do you just make a hole when you put those on? Well, we thought about it, but we just decided to do it this way. Yeah, because we didn't know exactly where things were going to be and we didn't know when what, the sink was going to be yeah. here. We, we thought the sink might be years down the road, but here it is. Um, okay, so I guess we need to cut down a bit. And then these two, I have elbows here. I'm going to replace those with T's so they come out this way. You did pretty good cutting that right on the mark there. Right, so what I need to do is, oh, you know, I need a whole bunch more tools. I need all my soldering supplies here. I need two T's. It's all I need, thankfully, just two T's and then a couple um, tubes. Oh, and then two turnoffs. <laughs> but uh, turn you don't put turnoffs in until you push the cabinet up, and then you put the turnoffs right. so that they're inside the cabinet. You don't want them inside the wall because then you have to cut the wall open every time. <laughs> That defeats do the purpose. Okay. So nerve wracking when he, he's cutting. I just don't want to have to undo anything that we've already done. Mm -hmm. But he's he's really good about that. So that's why he's doing that part. I can do the I can do the staining. This is this is my jam. This is his jam. He's really good at this part. In other news, I had these lamps here that were on the bed bed tables on either side. But I was really excited because we have a buy nothing group here on Facebook and lo and behold there was a pair of bed lamps on there for free. Look at that. I am so excited. This so much fits the time period of this building. So I was really excited to find these. They came with the lampshades and they're just beautiful. So those are our new side tables there when we finally get everything put back. Obviously we have family coming in a week so this is going to be all cleaned up by then. Wow it got really windy all of a sudden and rainy. It poured this morning. I think we got over an inch of rain last night and then it was beautifully sunny and now it's raining and winding again. Art got the hole done and now we're trying to find the water shut off and where that is. You know, it's funny, there's a lot of things when you're doing a project like this that you don't remember, that you think you're gonna remember where this pipe is and that pipe is, and well, the fact is, you don't remember it all. So learn from our mistakes, take pictures, particularly before you put your wall board up so you can see the inner workings and not have to go hunting for shut off valves and things like that because that was our big mistake. And now we're having to find where we put the shut off valve and how much we of the system we have to drain so we can get the soldering done. We're gonna leave it like this for now. And once Is this I... exactly where we want it? Well, where do you want it? <clears throat> well, it's the plumbing hole. That's your... Um, we should mark where that is. 
Okay, well. Do we have a pencil around here? Oh, you're good. Are you, we're, there's definitely room here. So where do you want it? How much space do you want it here and how much space do you want it there? There's still plenty of room to work with. Let's see. The hole goes from here to here. Well, I think... And the ponies that come out about... Now we have to see how not level our floor is. Oh, no. Not too bad. Uh, not actually. too bad. Only off Only a little bit, but I think it bows in the middle though, so I think we have more. Let's get this out of there since it's not level. Yeah, like this leg is not touching. So, um, anyway, I think it's time to start making our leg extenders. Yeah, and this, remember, that's already on cardboard. Yeah, so that's. So pull that out. So what I need to yeah, do... Yeah, going down now. <laughs> Just by a little well, it's bit. it's still not bad. Not as bad as I thought it would be. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I'll start with probably the rear uh, side there, and then do this one, and level it, and then just start putting all the other ones, making all the other ones level to those two. Okay. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Yep. Yeah. You okay. know how to do that. So, here we go. 